Hello and welcome back to the channel. Heir of Imperial Japan here in Fall of the Samurai and what the crap's going on, right? How about that for old time's sake, since we're in an old time campaign? Yes, the Fall of the Samurai campaign won the faction vote for my next historical playthrough, so here's what we are doing. As I described in the last video, we're going to be playing as the Satsuma, and our objective is to uh, basically create the Japanese Republic, so it will appear that we are fighting for the Empire and for the Emperor, but indeed we have secret motives to free Japan from totalitarian rule and turn it into a fledgling Republic and westernize it. So that is our objective. Um, and since we want to westernize it, I am going to try to minimize using any of the traditional troops as a challenge. I'm not going to guarantee that we will never use them because I think they start out in our armies. And there are times in a siege when you kind of need some fodder like that. Um, but we will see. I will try to minimize it. Um, so we're going to get things kicked off. It is the long campaign we're going to be playing, and I'm going to let you all check out the opening cinematic. After the Sengoku Jidai, peace reigned for 200 years. In Kyoto, the Emperor continued as divine head of state. But real power was held by the Tokugawa Shogunate. For two centuries, they ruled with absolute authority. Japan prospered. The people were content. In 1853, American warships changed everything. The Shogun abandoned his people and signed the Treaty of Peace and Amity. The gates to Japan were open. Trade was established. But the agreements favor the Western powers. The economy faltered, and the people suffered. In 1863, the Emperor overruled the Shogun. An imperial decree ordered the expulsion of all Western powers. No longer would Japan be Westernized. The time had come to strike back. Western powers gave the answer. Prepare to run out the guns. On my command, fire! The treacherous Westerners brought death to our people. The Shogun no longer commanded respect or loyalty. Imperial rule had to be restored. To strengthen our position, the Emperor made peace with the British. We will study their ways and discover their secrets. Only then can we destroy the Shogun and return honor to Japan. The Emperor must be victorious. Satsuma Domain. Our family, the Shimizu, has ruled these lands since the time of the first Minamoto Shogun, ever loyal to Japan and her people. But the Tokugawa 
and their lackeys have failed us, allowing themselves to be manipulated by Western powers. For the good of all, power must be returned to the Emperor. Our first priority should be to ally with domains who share our beliefs. There is little support for the shogunate here in Kyushu, but opposition is inevitable, and resistance must be met with force. Once the situation on Kyushu is under control, we must support our allies on the mainland. Imperial control of Kyoto and Edo will be vital if we are to break the shogun's wicked grip on the land. When full-scale war finally erupts between Imperial and shogunate forces, the people of Satsuma will be at the vanguard, leading Japan into a bright and glorious future. Long live the Emperor. All right, folks, here we are in Satsuma Domain, and we're going to get things kicked off. Uh, we've got this inspired endeavors that we will get if we increase our development level. We have a small navy here that has a uh, Chitin class corvette and a Chiyoda Gata class gunboat, or however you pronounce that. I couldn't been in, uh, begin to do it properly. <laughs> do you have a foreign veteran? I'm going to have to remind myself. Foreign veterans harass enemy armies, sabotage buildings, and challenge others to single combat. They can help troops gain experience and reduce the cost of recruitment when garrisoned. Okay. Um, so we probably want to embed them in our army. We start off with a kind of mix of traditional and um, modern troops here. We've got some line infantry. And let's see what small garrisons we have. We have some other generals uh, garrisoned, but we have very little here. Our enemies are going to be over here uh, at Huga. So this is the Saito that we are fighting against. And we're going to need to go take them out. Um... We can enter their domain a couple of different directions. Let's take a look, see what our buildings look like here. We got a police station, stronghold. The police station increases repression, helps us recruit Ishin Shishi agents. Arms, I'm just trying to remember if we have a barracks anywhere. Uh, let's see, I think what we're going to do is Kind of want to make Satsuma our main main recruiting. You see, I know we can recruit levy infantry to begin with, and we can also get um, some spear levy. So let's see here. I want the police station, or do we just go ahead and? I mean, those things are handy. If we build up our town. It doesn't take food like it did back in the day. That's a, another difference. It just increases um, modernization. And obviously you get unhappiness due to modernization. You have to offset, but we do have the police station. So we could go ahead and build up the town. And that probably wouldn't be a bad idea. And then in that case, that leaves me... We got a cadet school that we could build here so we can get um, line infantry and saber cavalry, which would both be quite handy. Also got Cottage Industry, the Inn, which also increases happiness and gives a little bit of wealth. So it's a bunch of options, and it's really a question of whether we want to kind of focus on economy and stuff first, or whether we want to focus on military. And we can probably get away with cheaper troops for a little while, but you're not going to want to uh, to do that for too terribly long. I do think I'm going to go ahead and kind of move up here... Go ahead and do some recruiting. I don't think there's a whole lot of point in moving. Um, I'm going to recruit a couple of levy infantry just so we can get a few extra guns. And then let's take a look at improving our town to a large town. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and build an inn. And then I'll build a cadet school at Satsuma once we begin to upgrade it. Because they have this uh, blacksmithing thing here that could be handy for recruiting. So let's go ahead and build the inn here. Gives us a little bit of income. We do have a harbor. Got a bit of money left. It's not quite enough to upgrade our tenant field. So let's go ahead and wait. I'm going to put my um, 
my agent over here to train our troops. And then I think our navy is okay for now. Not any huge worry. <clears throat> as far as diplomacy goes, looks like we have a trade agreement with the Kunamoto, who are to our north. And let's see here. We got an indifferent with the Saga. We are friendly but can't trade. And the Tanegashima are our vassal. Let's talk to the Saga real quick. Speak and do not mumble. Honesty and clarity march forwards together in negotiations. Um, they are not very interested in much of anything right now, but maybe they'll change their minds soon. So let's go ahead and ignore them. End our first turn here. I do believe it's like more turns per year in this campaign. It's not four per year where it's seasons. I'm pretty sure it's multiple turns per season. Like every turn is like two or three weeks or something. All right, so we have a few extra troops. Let's go ahead and start our long march to Hugo. The, some of the marches are a lot longer in this game. Plus, we have to kind of wait for winter to be over to begin the process, too. Not going to be able to recruit a whole lot more troops because we're going to be hurt for... So I'm wondering, I might honestly pull these... Spear garrisons just to help bolster the army a little. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull the spear garrisons just to help bolster the army some. Give us a little more strength. Push them out because they're not going to do me a whole lot of good sitting around there. Money is going to be very tight to begin with as it usually is in these campaigns unless we get a hold of some gold. Uh -huh. This trade agreement will help. To my offer. I, you know, I made this offer, but it's almost like you weren't listening. So we've already got some enemies here. Oh, Saito was the name of the town, sorry. Um, we are uh, going to uh, be fighting against the Nobioka here. They have entered our territory. I think there's like an ambush stance on this anymore. I think you just have to be like hiding. Yeah, we can lay an ambush right here. And then if they cross the road in front of us, and we can get these guys in an ambush. Plus, they won't see us. They'll see a town here, think it's vulnerable, and go for it. So hopefully this will work. I believe we can now upgrade our tenant fields, get a little more cash. This will modernize us more. We need to get into our clan development and start this well. I should have done that on turn one. Extra clan-wide happiness is usually a good thing. Ability to upgrade over here to a barracks and get revolver cavalry and sharpshooters is also quite nice. But um, all this reduction to administrative cost and other stuff is usually pretty helpful. So let's get started here on Epic Architecture. And let's end this turn and see if our ambush is successful. I may skip turn ends at some point if they get long and annoying. Um, so we'll check that out. We did get our ambush here, so we should be able to decisively defeat our enemies. Let's go ahead and take care of business on the battlefield. With all of his shogunate pride, <laughs> Munafusa marched right into Takamori's trap. He was so eager to gain control of Satsuma province that he didn't send his scouts ahead. So he turns and finds himself facing Takamori's line infantry on one side and Takamori's spears on the other, neither one looking very enticing. So in a last ditch bonsai charge in the name of the shogun, comes forward and is only met by Yari Spearman and the overwhelming number of guns it's a little too much for them to handle on the other side the other generals here perhaps this one's Munafusa I don't actually know if we can yet yeah. oh, we can't see which one is which <laughs> he's in one of these so he's either being stabbed by a spear here or stabbed by a spear on the other side he's my Yari Kachi as well some last holdouts because we will be modernizing. But these Yarikachi are taking these last moments to enjoy sinking their spear deep into an enemy's chest before they switch over to rifles, which will be coming because the Satsuma realm is going to modernize. Holy crap, man, this game had a beautiful skybox. 
There's a few graphical glitches and stuff in this game because it's old and I have really new equipment that it doesn't like. So, but man, it really does look good. It'd be really cool to see this game modernized. Like it has an old 32-bit engine, so it can't use all of your VRAM and it doesn't use different processor cores effectively or anything else like that. It'd be really neat to see. This game is really still quite beautiful. It just needs to be updated. All right, well, that is a solid victory to be certain, and uh, a well-laid ambush by Saigo Takamori, who begins his career well with his initial victory. And as I said in the intro, we will be phasing out the traditional troops as quickly as we can, you know, but I want it to kind of represent us modernizing, right? As we are early in the campaign here, we are going to be using some more traditional type stuff, and then we will begin to continue modernizing as rapidly as we can. Um, we m don't really have the money to recruit a whole lot more troops. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get ready to push into enemy territory. I believe winter ends. Yeah, see it says in winter armies will suffer attrition. We don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna move up to the edge of our territory where we can heal. And then we're gonna get our push put together to move into enemy territory. Now they do have a port settlement over here, which means if I bring my fleet up and support with my fleet, I can get within bombardment range. Won't be a particularly devastating bombardment. We can use our fleet for bombardment. This was the first time we had seen a mechanic like this in a Total War game, and uh, it did continue a little bit in Warhammer with like black arcs um, and other things. But yeah, the naval bombardment was a really cool feature. The fact that they put a railroad on the map here was also really neat. Like, if you control the railroad, you can move troops along it very quickly. Very nice representation of how certain technology would give a particular faction a massive advantage in a um, in a fight. So I think it's really neat to see that kind of stuff. There is some garrison here. And they have a small force outside. I'm going to go ahead and bombard settlement so we damaged their fortress which will be helpful we bombarded their settlement i'm completing some buildings our inn is up and running gave us a little more income and our tenant fields are going to be completed as well as our large town here soon uh, cash is going to be short as it is in most of these follow samurai campaigns early on there is no more movement available for us this campaign let's go ahead and in another turn so spring is here and our assault has begun. <laughs> These guys are already begging for a peace this. treaty. I think not. So that would be very convenient for you, wouldn't it? I think not. Bombardment failed to do any damage. Well, that's too bad. I would have preferred to have it do some damage. So we can... Um, We could try and starve them out. Let's see, they've got three gun units. I think, though, that if we deploy properly, we should be able to get a leg up on these guys. Assaulting a fortress may seem easier since you have guns, but in some ways it can be actually trickier because most of the early units in um, Fall of the Samurai have very low morale. And that makes sieging one of these fortresses quite difficult, actually. Let's give it a shot. Let's assault. After Munafusa's defeat in the ambush, it was left to, oh man, I forgot his name, <laughs> Naito something, I forgot his last name, we're just going to call him Naito too. Um, I, I believe Naito is the family name that comes first for them, much as my general uh, has the, the name the same as the others, but I could be wrong, I'm not super familiar with Japanese naming convention. In any case, uh, their castle here is going to be not well guarded, but it will be guarded. There are several units um, of line infantry, though they have positioned themselves incorrectly, so CA please. And uh, we've got some spear levy here, and then there's the General's Hatamoto here as well. Um, on my side of the battlefield, and what I was aiming for here is I was going to wait and see how the AI deployed, and I was going to move from my deployment zone and aim to overwhelm a single unit of the garrison. All the while, I have an unpleasant surprise hidden back here in the woods. I have a spear levy and a yari kachi that are hidden so they can make a beeline for this wall, capture this tower, and come in from behind the enemy as needed. Now, my forces are going to move into position. They're going to be tired, so they have to rest. But again, one of the keys to overcoming castles here is to not just do an insane all-out frontal assault. We want to overwhelm the gun units one at a time. 
Uh, now, firing from the walls is very advantageous for those who are defending. However, um, your positions are very limited from which you can fire at the walls, whereas I have a lot of opportunities to set up in different positions out here while trying to stay out of line of fire from another one. So you can see here that really they can only have one, maybe one and a half units firing back. And so if I position properly, we can overwhelm them and overcome that advantage. And you can see that that's what I am setting up to do here. So Akamori getting set up for more of his um, very nice um, <laughs> strategy that has worked out well for him. Nothing but decisive victories so far for him. I may have to move up a little further here. Yeah, I brought in a naval bombardment as well. You can see the graphics glitches get pretty intense with the naval bombardment, so you'll have to try not to let that ruin your experience. I don't know why that is. It didn't happen in the past. I'm guessing it's the new technology. But even though there are graphics glitches, this game really does still hold up extremely well for a game from 2011. It's quite an old title, but it is quite a beautiful one. So we are firing up into the garrison. And as my troops begin to fire, I'm going to now use this opportunity because the single garrison infantry over here is busy shooting at my gun troops. My spearmen can now move up relatively unopposed, begin to burn the gates open. So this is a great opportunity for me to get in and take less casualties. They really should have had a unit garrisoned here to protect this gate and an extra one here to protect this gate, uh, but they did not. They were out of position and they have not moved entirely from that position, though they did pull one unit um, to come this direction. My troops have just come into vision as well, and I was thinking they were going to move it to this wall. But we'll see what the AI does. They move it to that wall that could cause pretty tremendous damage to my uh, flanking spear troops. Look at that beautiful gun smoke there. We're getting to burn through the gate over here, and then I have another unit of spear levy going to burn through the other gate. This garrison infantry is getting absolutely slaughtered. Unfortunately for them, the only thing that shows is their head. So when they do get hit, it is going to be a headshot. And that is never pleasant. You can see the garrison infantry already taking pretty bad losses. It's not a pleasant fight for them. You can see the anime blood spewing as they continue to take hits. So we have them definitely overwhelmed. There's not much they can do. Take a look at the numbers. They're already down to 67 troops. So they are not in good shape. The gate is open. And I'm now going to start entering the citadel. The other gate is soon to be burned. Their General's Hatamoto is down here in this lower tier. Would have expected them to maybe stay in the keep or at least, at the very least, dismount before attacking a spear unit. I'm going to go ahead and turn and try and brace for this charge as best I can. I don't know if my troops will fully brace. And I don't even remember exactly what bracing is like in Shogun 2. I, I think it helps, but I don't think it's near as critical as it was the titles that came after this. Yeah, the uh, General's Haramoto here is going to be decimated against these spears. Not the fight that they should ever have been in. See the gates over here are now on fire. And the garrisoned infantry is basically no more. <laughs> They've been shot to death. Now, let's go take a look at the other flank. My troops have reached the walls. The enemy did not place their uh, gun unit there to garrison. Some of my men will fall from the wall or be shot from the tower but we will be able to capture the tower. And if we take a look for AI troops in the vicinity, there are none at the moment. They decided to run off somewhere else. I believe they came, yeah, they came across the upper courtyard back down onto this other flank where I now have my gun troops moving in. And we're actually gonna come into a pretty tight quarter standoff here. I'm moving my troops out of the way so some of my men can open fire. This is gonna be a point blank gun duel here two mean point blank. The enemy general went down. I had another naval bombardment. And uh, you can see the nice glitching potholes over there where it went. And this unit is going to rout its leadership broken. And defeat seems a certainty here. My Yarikachi and Spear Levy captured the tower, which is now firing in my behalf. And as I see this uh, line infantry Sir, unit approaching, I'm going to engage the rapid advance of my Yarikachi. These men are going to summon their energy and speed across the battlefield into an epic charge against this modern line infantry, which was unable to get any shots off in the process and will subsequently be slaughtered in a melee against these far superior melee troops. 
Light Infantry might hold up kind of okay against a Spear Levy, but certainly not against a Yarikachi. It has better armor and uh, much better melee stats. But you all watch this glorious combat. Battle is almost over, and we're going to take the castle. Give us our first new holding in terms of additional castles. And in his second outing, Saigo Takamori racks up another decisive victory for his troops. It's an excellent outing. And I had some levy infantry really get some kills there. Impressive stuff. Um, soon, they will be trained in the use of firearms and will no more carry their spears. But as for now, we have to do what we have to do. Now, we can loot this town and get a whole lot of money. It's going to really hurt public order a bunch. Um, it, we can occupy it, which means we acquire nothing, and we start to gain a little town wealth. Um, ooh, boy, it's, it's tricky. Um, damage all buildings. You know what? It's been a long time since I have looted, but I think it... I don't think... I don't remember if looting hurts your... Looting a settlement will provide a lot of money in the short term, but it will damage more buildings and public order will be worse, making it harder to keep control of the settlement. I don't remember what happens. Like, the, do you still take, like, a um, credibility hit in diplomacy for looting? I know you did during the Sengoku Jedi. I don't know if that is still in place. We need to repair our fortress. We do have a cadet school here, which is handy, but I don't know that that's what we need here because we're going to build one in Satsuma. So let's go ahead and torch this one. There's a harbor and a tea plantation as well. And this tea plantation gives us extra tea, which we can trade and we can gain extra wealth from trade. So this, this province will be a nice, a nice boost um, to our economic capability. Check out our diplomacy again. Trade ports are at full capacity, can trade an unfriendly shogunate supporting clan though so it's not likely that we're going to get much out of him we are trading the kunamoto we are trading by sea with the saga which is why we cannot trade with the tanagashima because we don't have extra port route open let's take a look we have a little bit of cash on hand not a lot um let's see we got a harbor which the harbor, I believe, gives us, yeah, plus one to possible sea trade routes. I feel like we should take the harbor. The plantation would also be handy, but until we can trade it, it's not going to do us a lot of good. So I'm going to build the port first. And let's go ahead and end our turn here. So a nice new tea plantation. Our troops will be drinking well. Have some nice stuff to trade to our allies as well. This is a good start, good start. So we finished epic architecture and it defaulted to administrative training which reduces administrative cost gives extra wealth by farms across all provinces probably not a bad tech all in all this one reduces agent action costs this one gives us daimyo honor see so do have daimyo honor and i'm guessing that looting doesn't look good for it more clan-wide happiness here as well now, there are some important upgrades for ships that can make a huge difference, like getting explosive shells is huge. Um, it really gives you a giant um, improvement to your navy. Clan-wide tax rate and economic growth is also really nice. There's a bunch of tech that I would like to have right now. So let's just go ahead and start on this one that's on. That should be good. Get us a little bit of reduction in administrative cost. Uh, the inn gives us 360. We can put in cottage industry. It hurts happiness, though. Cottage industry gives you a little more. The police station gives you none. So I think I'm going to go with the inn. It seems like a good way to get a little bit of both worlds here. Where we can make the populace a bit happier and um, slowly build our economy as well. We got a building slot open back here at Satsuma, but we do not have the money to build in it, which is understandable, though our income has gone up considerably since taking control of the tea plantation, so 
That is a big help. Let's see, our army is replenishing. Should be ready to get on the march soon. I'd like to get up here and attack the Oka. I believe the Oka are the next um, Shogunate supporting clan. They are, so we're going to need to attack them. Going to be the next. And let's see, the inn won't be done for four turns. I could go ahead. I don't have any money to do any recruiting. I'm going to scout ahead with my fleet. We'll get a little intel. Let's see what we can learn here. Clan encountered. Tosa. We don't have a port to trade with the Tosa yet either, or else I would go ahead and attempt that. Um, let's go ahead and end our turn. The Tosa are another pro-imperial faction. It probably wouldn't hurt to make friends with. I'd like to <clears throat> minimize the unnecessary wars here at home. So Seth Patrick has increased in rank. Let's go take care of his level up here. I'm trying to remember how to do it. Okay, right-clicking is how you do it. We can hire a retainer, so we can give him some opera glasses to get more campaign line of sight, or we can give him an American gunmaker's agent, which gives extra accuracy and reload to the rifle troops. I like that one. I'm going to take it. Resolve when sabotaging, and resolve to a military administration. Supervising recruitment, that leads to agent chance of success. Melee attack of all units, which he's embedded. Sabotage. Campaign line of sight. 10% campaign movement range for the army in which he's embedded. There's some nice buffs here, depending on which route we take. I was seeing if any of these... Yeah, I see here accuracy of infantry and cavalry. It's a ways down the tree, though. Aging in single combat. Let's go ahead and go down this tree for now. Okay, wait, was that a... Oh, I thought maybe we could change his name. Doesn't look like it. It's like, oh man, we can change his name. That'd be awesome. I don't think CA had added that yet. Saigo Takamori has uh, leveled up as well. So let's look at his retainers. He's got a general uniform, which makes the rally ability better, or give him phonograph, which increases morale. I think the uh, morale buff would be nice. Morale is very low. For a lot of troops in this game, at least compared to what we were used to in the standard Shogun 2. This side is going to increase the attack of his bodyguard. This one adds to his command and gives extra armor. Protecting hidden armies. Enables night battles and extra command during ambush. Replenishment rate, though, is also very nice. And this one also gives us campaign movement range. I'm going to go and try and get this one for the campaign movement range. That is a pretty sweet upgrade. So we'll take a look at it. All right. Akamori levels up. We now have a bit more cash. I think I'm going to recruit like a couple of units to help hold the garrison here at Huga. I'm pretty sure if I take this army out, yeah, see, the people are going to get upset. That is quite understandable. If I turn off taxes temporarily... It will satiate them. So let's do that. And then once we get the garrison in place, we can turn the taxes back on. I'm going to push north. Satsuma. We just don't have the money to build anything else at the moment. Like I said, money is going to be short in supply. Might be just inside bombardment range. I can't quite tell. Yeah, now we are inside bombardment range. Excellent. All right, let's end our turn and see if we can make a move on Bungo. Try and expand our holdings. Let's take a look at Huga here. Settlements. Yeah, they're still unhappy, so we're going to leave the tax exemption on. We'll keep checking that, and we're going to move up to the border here. They do have an army outside of the settlement. It would be great to catch them outside of the settlement. I don't know 
whether or not that's going to happen. Part of me wonders whether I should... We should put the cadets school here because we get better accuracy. I'm just wondering whether I should do it in that order. And then I'm thinking about switching this police station over to the inn for extra money. Takes a while. Let's just build the cadet school here. This will be fine. Go ahead and dedicate that province to some military infrastructure. The Saga have a lot of troops rolling around. Must be nice to have that AI money flowing, you know, where you don't have to worry about upkeep or anything else. My sword for you, my lord. I don't know if we can reach this army all in one turn. It looks like we can. That is impossible, my lord. You do not have access rights. Choose an option. Well, we're going to declare war. My spirit hungers for blood. What up, losers? I will listen to what you say. Oh, crap. They're allied with the Kunamoto. Good. This is problematic. They're going to come attack Satsuma. So we'll need to make this quick and then move against the Kunamoto. And we lost our trade agreement with the Kunamoto. That is unfortunate. We did catch these guys on the open battlefield. They have some Saber Cavalry. But we should get a great opportunity to destroy them here. Yoka troops did not even have a general to command them on the battlefield. They only had a captain, Captain Suda, who was leading this uh, infantry unit here. I think it's a garrison, a levy infantry. Spear levy. They do have Saber Cavalry, which is a nice modern melee cavalry unit. For them to be fielding however unless the saber cavalry does an excellent job of getting to my flanks and somehow avoiding the bevy of spears under my command uh, they would do very well saber cavalry is extremely dangerous to gun troops but not so much spear troops it is a little bit slow um uh, you know in terms of cavalry it's not like a light cavalry like a yari cav or a light cavalry um but nonetheless now they do not have the range that i do so the ai feels compelled to attack and they attack dead on. You can see that I have my troops spread out in a wide formation to maximize the number of bullets that can fly out. And I'm going to run through my lines of spear troops to intercept the charging saber cavalry and minimize its effect. And then in the middle, I'm going to continue having my troops fire at their spear levy, which is approaching. And then I will bring my own spear troops again, <clears throat> block their charges, give them nothing for free. I want to minimize losses here amongst my gun troops. And then once my gun troops are freed from the melee, so like over here, the Saber Cavalry is going to fall, then I will give them an order to fire a Captain Suda's troops back here. Holy crap, man, this game is beautiful. They really need to make a remastered version of it. It would be absolutely lovely. I've always loved Fall of Samurai. The aesthetic in this was absolutely beautiful. It was really fun gameplay. But Captain Suda and his troops are defeated, leaving their castle ripe for the taking. All right, well, another excellent victory, a decisive victory for Takamori, who is really looking good so far. An excellent fight. Now, of course, we outmatched them, but the important thing is here is that we need to take low casualties because we need to capture this settlement, and then we need to immediately move against the Kunamoto before they take the fight to our own provinces, which they almost assuredly will. Um, and they're AI, so they likely have more troops than we would like to see as well. I think the auto resolve will be fair to us here. Um, though I am going to quick save just in case. Let's see what happens. Not great, not bad. We're going to occupy here as well at Bungo. And we'll have to leave a small garrison here as well. I'm going to repair. Uh, the fort. I do not have enough money. Or uh, we can't recruit because the castle's damaged. That's really unfortunate. Um, shoot. That means the cadet school here is a waste of money. We need an inn or something to help hold. We picked up some copper here, which should be helpful in the long run. Yeah, we have got to get on our enemies quickly here. So let's end a turn. 
Fortunately, winter is still a ways off. Tosa now wished for a trade agreement, and I would be happy to grant this. We need the extra trade income. That will help. Summer is here. We need to make a beeline for Higo. I am going to get on the march. I'm going to put in an inn here, and then I'm going to recruit a small garrison. I can't afford much. The infantry, and then I'm going to exempt Bungo from the taxes. We just, I mean, I'm going to risk the rebellion because I can't afford to leave these guys on my border because I, I can't afford a garrison back here at all of my settlements. Speaking of taxes, let's take a look here. We're very close to being able to unexempt Yuga from the taxes, so we just need to hold out with the lower income for a bit longer until we bring these populations under control, and hopefully the Kunamoto have not moved on our capital prior to me being able to move on theirs. Oh my gosh, here they are. Wow, this is exactly what I was worried about, that they would have better troops. We've got two wooden cannons. They have more guns than we do. They have more range. They have more cavalry. They're better in almost every way here, so this is a bit problematic. We're going to need to retreat, but hopefully we can hold their attention over here. And we can possibly lay an ambush and gain some advantage. Bungo, there's mounting unrest. We could also win, probably, if they assaulted our castle. I would feel fairly confident that we could beat them back. Let's see what happens if I fall back to the castle. Plus, that should help us hold off a rebellion. I can try to recruit another levy infantry to help Honestly, we should probably grab one more spear levy, too. Oh, we can't do it all in the same turn, so there's no sense in wrapping that money up there. Let's check our ability to gather taxes here now. Sweet. So we can now tax Yuga. And let's see what the Kunamoto do. I'm going to try and recruit another unit in here to help out. We may just have to be better, which we can do. Oh, yes, they're coming straight towards us. This is good. Good, and they're going to attack us. So now we can defend our castle, and we do have military naval bombardment support as well. So I'm feeling pretty confident that we can gain our victory here and then push quickly towards their territory. Osokawa Yoshikuni here of the Kunamoto brings his forces to trap me back at the castle in what looked like an epic victory for them before my strategic retreat, which of course would have shamed me in the age of Bushido, but... This is the Boshin War, and will be different, but he has a large number of troops approaching, and oddly enough, completely and alone deployed some European wooden cannons here on the other flank. Didn't expect this. So the wooden cannons are fine. I, I say European, I don't know why I'm saying that, just wooden cannons. Unfortunately for me, they managed to destroy the wall on which my best unit was garrisoned. That was a line infantry that has several chevrons and it took it down to near half health. So seeing this, um, Saigo Takamori and his bodyguard bravely charge headlong into the cannons. It's a bit of a risk because they did have time to reload. Sir, and our general came very close to dying there. <laughs> very close indeed. Nevertheless, his Hatamoto arrives, draws their katanas and their sabers, and begins the process of cutting up the enemy artillery. So an odd decision to deploy these separate of the protection of their army. They definitely should have deployed these units together and it would have been quite dangerous to me. But in that poor decision, the uh, enemy army now finds itself in a bit of a desperate assault here. They're going to come headlong. Remember how I told you in a previous battle replay from this episode, not do this? Well, you're going to see why. They are all bottled up, all their troops moving together, which means that almost all of my bullets are going to find a mark. Check out, again, more nice graphic glitches. How much I can do about that. Um, so I'll let you see this beautiful battlefield here. 
Um, beautiful for me, not going to be so much for our foes here. Fortunately for them, though, it's only a levy infantry up there, so its fire rate is not a spectacular. Had that been like a French or British or American Marine up there, this would have inflicted hundreds of casualties on them on the way to the wall. Nevertheless, they're still going to take some nasty casualties. However, they may think, all right, we'll get to the wall, we'll climb up, we'll easily defeat that levy infantry, but that is not the plan I have in mind. Behind my levy infantry, I have more gun troops. So as they scale the walls, I'm going to have a death box set up within the keep. This is a great way to deal with troops that are assaulting your keep. Rather than just trying to have everything fight at the walls, feel free, fall back to the next position and shoot up the enemy some more. So you can see here that I've got my firing squad ready. It does take a moment for your troops to recognize these troops coming over the wall. They don't always just fire immediately at the first man who comes over, but they will fire. You can see my towers firing, and here comes a volley. So you can get even more kills this way, and further just destroy the morale of the attackers with all these point-blank shots. Here's that line infantry, it took a lot of damage earlier. I'm gonna move them up, get them in a nice flanking position here in a moment. You can see that they're gonna continue to charge forward, so I brought up the melee troops. So now after having been shot by multiple volleys, having to climb over a wall, they're then going to find themselves faced by fresh melee troops on the other side and that is not going to be a pleasant experience. Uh, but it is for our enemies, and so I really don't care whether it is a pleasant experience. It was never intended to be. You can see that I try to keep as many units ready to keep shooting as possible, because it's gonna cause us the most damage. I've called in a naval bombardment while the enemy was trying to get over the walls. One of my shots did hit right in the middle of their unit, causing tremendous damage. These guys were lucky that a shell didn't land on them right next to the wall. Very lucky because they were piled up. You can see the battle continues and it is not going well for our enemies. But Saigo Takamori is going to rack up yet another decisive victory over his enemies. This time when he was outnumbered, cleverly falling back to a better defended position and using superior tactics to destroy his more numerous foe. Not only were they more numerous, they had artillery. So technically they had some Pretty big advantages here. I got this guy crawling along the ground. That is quite the death animation there. He is really making something of it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, our foes are gonna be cut to pieces. At this point, the General's Hatamotos are the only thing left, and they're going to have to come up and attempt to scale the walls themselves. Now, there's a funny thing happening over here. The uh, enemy is fleeing in single file along my wall where I have an infantry garrison, so they'll be cut down in their cowardly retreat here. So, very fitting. I'm going to continue to garrison more and more troops over here to try and cut down as many of these guys as we can. I don't want these to be able to regroup and pose a significant threat to us. Because sometimes the troops can route quickly without losing too many, and you can still find yourself having a tough battle on the next turn, and that is the last thing that I want to happen here. I'm going to get repositioned and get ready to shoot up the uh, enemy general's Hatamotos, which are now uh, getting ready to climb the wall. See that they're men. You don't ever want to climb these high sections of walls unless you're forced to, because you'll lose a ton of men just from climbing the walls. See, it's really not a terribly pleasant experience for these men <laughs> trying to climb into the keep. And then, once they arrive, they are immediately shot in the face for their trouble, which I'm sure they very much appreciate. Yeah, he's gonna make a charge here into one of my garrison units. These guys still getting a few shots off. Woo! It's point blank shots with a high caliber musket. It's gotta feel great. I don't know if it's a musket actually. It could be a musket. It might be a rifle. I don't really know what exactly the Japanese troops would have been armed with. Looks like it very well could be a rifle. Anyway, yeah, bloody battle for the enemy. This is going to be an epic victory for us. We should be able to destroy the remnants of their troops quite easily after this. You can see here the Hatamoto have started to come in and they are going to be met by an overwhelming number of my melee troops. Their leadership will be quite low. And although they'll get a few kills because of the quality of the Hatamoto versus my levies, it's not like a Warhammer unit, you know, where a small unit like this really has a prayer of overcoming hundreds of enemies. This game was not programmed such a way and uh, they will lose. They will lose, and they will die. Another battle, yet another decisive victory for Takamori. Other than that unfortunate incident with the wooden cannon, this battle went extremely well for us. 
and we made our enemies pay dearly for that mistake, and I think we can now catch and destroy them on the way to their territory, and hopefully we can get there before they have another army ready to go. Um, so, I do believe that held our recruitment up, yeah, because our castle was damaged in this attempt, so we need to repair the castle, and I'm going to take my army, and I'm going to move against our enemies who now escaped with only a small wooden cannon. Just in case the auto resolve screws me here. Don't think so. So we destroyed their armies. Our general increases in rank. Bungo is exempt from tax, which is helping, but the castle is destroyed and there's no garrison. So I am going to stay here for one turn. I really hate this. We need to be on the move because they could have a second army marching towards our territory because remember that they are not constrained by the same small income that we are as an AI faction. So it worries me a great deal to have to tarry here for any even small amount of time. I'm going to take my army now and get on the march. You don't even... Yeah, I'm going to... I need to be able to reach their castle all in the next turn, so I'm going to push as far forward as I can. We can get to Higo. And we need to do some recruiting. Hopefully this garrison can calm the people down. We will see. We will see. All right. We have a little bit of cash. Probably not enough to do much can improve to a port here, which adds an extra trade route for us. So let's do that. Trade routes will be valuable. We have copper. We've got tea already. We have some pretty valuable exports. Oh, let's hope we don't get a rebellion at Bungo. Ooh, the Choshu. Hello, friends. I absolutely accept your offer. Just want to get to Higo. If we can get to Higo, I feel like we are going to be in better shape. Now, the Choshu... I don't own Boozen yet, I don't believe. We have a chance to get a hold of Boozen. Alright, let's approach cautiously. They do have an army. It's not a huge one, though. It's probably their only, only remaining army. I don't believe they have any further allies. Wow, these guys were pumping out the European wooden cannons. I'm gonna hold a siege on these guys. I don't want to get shot up by those cannons, and I'm going to see if we can pull them out onto open ground where I think the cannons will do less, less effective work to give us campaign movement range and replenishment. Fleets to engage in night battles. And let's see, we, got to, we can save this skill point when we get down here. We don't have to use it right now. It gives us more running speed. We're a larger bodyguard, close bombardment range, accuracy of ships, or units. It tightens up the radius of naval fire support. Stand and fight is pretty cool, though it's not as useful. But it could be good. And provinces where it's present. Let's, let's go ahead and split it up for now. Should be okay. All right. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this first episode. We had plenty of action. We picked up uh, Huga. We're now able to tax it as well. Bungo looks like it is at least in an acceptable level of anger towards me. Um, we've actually already flipped here to pro imperial, so that is good. Our agent may have helped in that. I forgot that he was back here. Good day to you, sir change the outlook of those people. I'm going to go ahead and move him up with this army again. Keep training troops. So this is this is good. We're in good shape. Um, if we can take down Higo without an army getting past us to attack Satsuma, then we will be in excellent shape, I think. So a good start to the campaign. A good little territory grab to get things going. Our income should be honestly pretty decent once we're able to start taxing all these places. We upgrade our farms, our tea plantation and other things. And speaking of tea plantation, we should be able to go ahead and upgrade it now. Um, so I will see you all in the next episode. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.